Good morning, Trinity students and family. Good morning, Mr. Staff. I'm glad that you all are here today, and welcome to our September chapel. I'm so glad to have the opportunity for us to gather together and to worship. Before we get started, I would like to pray. So let us, let us bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you that you've granted to us this day. We thank you that you have given to us an abundance of your gifts and of, Lord, your presence. We are grateful. We thank you for this opportunity to honor and to glorify you. We ask, Lord, that the words of our mouth and meditations of our heart be pleasing to you, that what we have to offer be that fragrant aroma to your throne. We thank you, Lord, for our chapel speaker today. Grant her that strength and that confidence and sharing the word that you've laid upon her heart. And Lord, may we not forget the purpose and um, the place that we are at today. Our purpose is to glorify you, and our place to do so is here at your school. And we thank you, and we praise you, all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We have something special for you this morning, and I would like to ask our kindergarten class to come forward this morning. They are going to start us off with a song called Hallelujah. And, and they might need, be a little shy, so they may need a little encouragement. Are you ready? I'll play your first note, okay? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Good job. Let's stand and continue our time of worship this morning.
am excited and pleased and blessed and honored to present to you uh, your chapel speaker this morning, one of our eighth graders, and uh, she may need a little extra thank you because she is our first chapel speaker, and that slot for first chapel speaker is not the first one that fills up. So please welcome this morning, Miss Miriam Monti. Good morning. My name is Miriam Monti, and for chapel this morning, I would like to speak to you about faithfulness through trials and tribulations. When I couldn't come up with a personal example, I turned to the giants of faith. That is when I learned about Gladys Oliver. Dedication, hardship, and faith characterized the, the life of Gladys Oliver. Gladys faced a hard life when she decided to dedicate her life to spreading the gospel in China. It took a miracle for an unmarried, uneducated woman to raise the finances to find a post. She traveled by train, boat, bus, and donkey. After living and working in China for a few years, she faced her hardest situation yet. The 1930s were a tumultuous and dark time for China due to the war with neighboring Japan. Gladys hid herself and her children that she had adopted from the Japanese who had invaded her occupying area. She collected information on the Japanese movements and plans to benefit the Chinese resistance. When she published a book about how she felt about Japan, Japan she met, they sent out a warrant for her arrest. Gladys knew she needed to move her children to safety. Gladys began the long journey to Khan with her 94 children to care for. This was a huge test for Gladys mentally, physically, and spiritually. At one point in the trip, the Gurus reached a river that they could not cross. While Gladys was deciding what to do, one of the children decided to suggested to pray. The entire group started to pray. When they were finished, an officer rode up on horse. He listened to their story and told them that he could get them a boat. They crossed the river safety with the help of the officer. At the end of this trip, left Gladys with many wounds from the Japanese and very ill. This did not end, this did not stop her from completing her mission. Gladys spent the rest of her life caring for China and its people. Gladys shows us outstanding perseverance and faithfulness. She did not give up or lose faith, though she faced many trials. How do we keep faith and stand against evil? The first step to doing this is to recognize what we have to look out for or fight against. By using what God has given us, we can act in the right way. The Bible, in the Bible, we can try to resemble the people who had faith through troubles. Genesis 50, 20. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. This verse is from the story of Joseph. Joseph was taken away from his home and faced many trials. But God had a plan for Joseph, and Joseph was, though Joseph was, tr was treated badly and went through many hardships, God used him to save many people during a drought. The second thing we can do is to be steadfast. James 1, 2 through 4. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. James explains that when we meet trials, we will grow in our faith. We should not grumble or complain, though it's often what we want to do. It helps to know that Jesus suffered just like us. He has experienced even more suffering than we can imagine. 1 Peter 2.21 says, For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you might follow in his steps. Third of all, we should use these moments in our life to learn from them. When we are tested, it makes our faith stronger. 1 Peter 1, 6 through 7 says, In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found in a result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. If we stand strong in trials and trust in Christ, it will result in giving glory to God. God uses things for good, even bad and hard times. Gladys Oliward's favorite Bible verse was Philippians 3.10. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If this means facing hard trials like Gladys or just getting through a rough day, we can try to be like Christ when we face hardships. We can recognize the struggle, remember those who have come before us, remain steadfast, learn from the trials, and above all, we must trust that he will use all things for good. And that's a good reminder of the manner by which we live and the God by which we serve. Thank you for sharing. 
Our final song this morning is Goodness of God. You're welcome to stand. And as you do and as you sing this song, um, I, my hope and my desire is that you might keep in mind the three things that Miriam shared with you this morning as we uh, keep the faith in knowing that there will be difficulties to remain steadfast and to trust in our God, to know that the difficulties are there and that God will use all things for his good. Father in heaven, Lord, you are good. There's no one that is like you. And you call us to be your people. That we can behold what manner of love that you have given to us to call us children of God. We thank you. We thank you for the reminder of how your word is so clear and how we can be steadfast. We thank you that you have given us examples to follow of individuals that in the face of difficulty and trial, they remain faithful and steadfast. We thank you, Lord, that we have the honor and the opportunity to come before your throne in grace and mercy. Because of your son, Jesus, give us strength to behold the responsibilities you've given us today to do as you've asked us to do that we share the joy that you've set within our heart with those around us, that we share kindness and respect and integrity.
integrity in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love you all. Have a wonderful day today. Thank you for joining us in our chapel. You are dismissed. Just start on the court. Shine.